We are officially heading to Baja, and since our van is relatively brand new, you'd think this preparation would be pretty simple. However, after the brutal solo road trip, we have quite a bit of work to do. Say goodbye to over $1,000 of repairs and hello to dead batteries in the middle of the desert. We're Kevin and Taylor, a travel couple turned travel family. Three years ago, we traveled to Baja for the first time and completely fell in love with it. Now we are excited to finally be heading back to share our favorite place with our favorite guy. Now that our recent winter getaway is over, we are back to reality with a laundry list of things to do before we cross into Baja. Fortunately for us, we met up with Bob and Hillary of the Van Caskies who have been super accommodating and literally let us turn their house into a shipping address for all of the packages that we needed to fix some of the issues that we had on the recent road trip. I'm going through all of the packages and it's time to make a list of what we need to do. First, fix upgrade the Starlink, Colorfly Easton, miscellaneous Wyatt traction stuff, boards, compost, Baja, patients, and then the last one is food shopping. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten things. Ten things to do. While we are making our list, someone decided to spit up all over our bed. What are you doing, buddy? You're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. Oh boy. Yeah. Joys. Yeah, the joys. The joys. Life's gonna be a little bit harder now, isn't it? If you saw our video where I road tripped 2,500 miles solo across the country, then you'll know we had some issues, which we lost a solar panel, believe it or not, and our Starlink did not work. So I'm gonna tackle the Starlink one today. Luckily, I have a new one shipped here at Bob and Hillary's as well as a replacement cable. So I'm gonna start with the replacement cable and then we'll see where we go from there. Okay, first thing to do is to test out the cable and see if the Starlink will actually work with the new cable that we have here using the native Starlink router. And if it does work, then I at least know that the Starlink is still good and not completely kaput. We have the new cable connected. Router's on. Let's connect to Starlink here. Offline, it might be rebooting, but I'll let it go for a little bit. But if not, unfortunately, the Starlink might be kaput. The problem too is that it literally worked last week, like right before we left. Now it's not working. So condensation got on the inside of this. That's what did it, Dale. Can you see it? Yeah, it's wet. There's a lot of condensation. Look. <gasps> Yeah. How Man. much did that thing cost? It didn't keep it secure? That thing was like 400. Don't buy it. Yeah, if I were you guys looking to get a Starlink, I would definitely go Generation 3 because doing I all of this. $400 and it didn't even keep it dry for six months. Well, yeah. I heard some people you could put silica, silica gel pads in it, but. Man, that's a bummer. This P component is like $400. Starlink 600, so it's a grand down the tubes. Oh, that's disappointing. Right? At least you found the answer and you've got a solution. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Margarita's on deck here. And then Bob put together this amazing spread. What do we got here, Bob? Got steak, chicken, potatoes, green beans, Caesar salad, some bread. Oh my gosh. <laughs> just a simple meal. We are spoiled, thank you. <laughs> yep, we just, we don't want them to leave. Yeah. After that amazing dinner, it was time for the hot tub in Bob and Hillary's backyard oasis. And although we didn't want to leave, we didn't want to overstay our welcome, so we took off to the desert the next day while we waited for our packages to arrive. We've been in the desert for two days now, chopping away at some work and getting some editing done for our vlogs, but 
I just set up my Holofly eSIM, which is our data plan that we're taking into Mexico once we cross the border. If you've been around for a while, we've been using Holofly for probably two to three years now, and the same's gonna go for Mexico. The last time we were in Mexico was back in 2021, and we had to use local SIM cards, which were kind of a pain in the butt to get, and there wasn't unlimited data plans with the options available. So every week or every like three days we were running out of data we had to top back on go to a local convenience store it was a pain in the butt and if we wanted to use our american sim cards we had to pay insane international data learning fees or upgrade our data plan to an international data plan which is super expensive so i'm super grateful for holofly because they make it super easy and convenient to get your data plan set up before you even get to your destination so i'm doing it today in arizona i have two 60-day e-sims for taylor and i for mexico with unlimited data and then the day before we cross into the border, I will activate it onto our phone. And then right when we cross, we'll just turn it on and boom, we should have signal and everything should be working seamlessly. I'll show you how we set it up when we get to the border. But if you have an international trip lined up, consider using Hallfly because we have a 5% off coupon code Mathers on the map. That'll get you 5% off your order, obviously. And it's a great way to be proactive with your trip, getting everything set up before you get to your destination so you don't have to worry about any language barriers or finding a local sim card which can be a pain in the butt based on our experience the next thing on our list is coconut fiber or compost for our compost toilet and you're supposed to like mix them in a bucket add some water on it I don't have a bucket so I'm going to try to do it directly in the toilet itself we'll see how this goes After about a gallon of water, I was able to break the brick apart, but that came at a cost. So there's compost all over the bathroom, all over my hands, and I'm also kind of mixing it with a used compost bin. So it's not the most sanitary thing I've ever done in my life. I cleaned it out. Oh, I just emptied it out. I didn't like spray it with soap. I mean, it's dry compost. Not terrible. Okay, so one brick filled up this entire bucket so now I need to take half of it out and put it in a big ziploc bag uh, why didn't I do this at Hillary and Bob's house this was a mistake our batteries are basically dead so I gotta turn the car on and uh, hopefully charge them up a little bit well, well, well. What a morning. What time did Daddy get us up this morning? 5.30. Are we happy about it? No. My mom's giving me a hard time because I could have turned on the van yesterday, but let me give you my side of the story. <laughs> so yesterday we were down to like 60%. We've been in the desert for since today's Wednesday since Sunday. And there has been absolutely zero sunshine the entire time. We're in Arizona and in the winter. Who knew that they get rain and cloudy weather? I did not. So, no solar, no driving, is a recipe for dead batteries, which is why we're here right now. Yesterday, or was it two days ago, that our solar jumped up. It was at 60%, and then in like 10 minutes it went to 100%. What that made me realize is that our battery monitor had the incorrect settings, the incorrect parameters. So I adjusted that, which doesn't reset or synchronize until you get a 100% state of charge. So we are not in a situation to charge the batteries at all. So our monitoring is completely off, but the sun is popping up in about 10, 15 minutes. We'll have sunrise, so hopefully we'll start to get solar. But we need to be very low on our battery consumption for a little bit. Mommy can't make coffee? No. Mommy can't make coffee Daddy at the moment. Daddy wakes us up at 5.30 and then doesn't even let us make coffee, bud. It's not very nice of Dada. Yeah, Dad's in the doghouse right now, so it's just great. But it sucks because if we had all four panels, we'd probably be still pretty low, but <laughs> we'd be maybe a little bit better. Sun could help. Hopefully we get some sunshine today. To try and get myself out of the doghouse, 
I'm going to attempt to turn the inverter on and attempt to turn the coffee on, which takes up a lot of power, so uh, this should be interesting. Do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Here we go. The urge for coffee might deplete our batteries. Let's see. Coffee. That means Mama has energy. That means she pumps, and I get blueberry. The funny thing about this is that Taylor drinks decaf coffee, so the whole like Taylor gets energy bit is not definitely accurate. She just wants her coffee because she likes having the habit of drinking coffee. I like the taste of coffee in the morning. Just make the coffee and sip it. <laughs> Just because you don't drink coffee. Jeez! Daddy's gonna bring her coffee. Yes, he really, 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 yes. Do, 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 do. We're doing fine right now. It's when the heater kicks on for the coffee pot. It ramps up to like 1200 watts, so we'll see what happens. Well, this isn't good. 1300 watts, and we're down to 12.2 volts, 12.1 volts. Mom's getting her coffee. Our battery survived, but brought us right back down to dangerous levels. So, was it worth it? I think so. Mom thinks so, of course. <sighs> What's your little song? <laughs> about that sunrise. <laughs> there ain't no sun in the sky about that sunrise. <laughs> it's just, you would think we are in the Pacific Northwest with how gloomy it is. <laughs> but mommy has a coffee, so she's happy. It's decaf. No, there's no caffeine. But it gives her so much energy. It doesn't give me energy. You said it. It just gives me the pump of the morning to start my morning since I've been up since 5.30 because daddy. And now it's raining. It was supposed to be sunny. It's literally raining in Arizona in the desert. What is happening? We stayed at Bob and Hillary's house who are notorious for having bad luck on the road. And I think their bad luck might be spreading our way, which uh, I don't appreciate. <laughs> What's your whip up, Mom? Just some avocado toast. Not as good as my toast at home. There's no bacon and the cheese is not shredded, but Hopefully it's still tasty. What do you have in little cutie pie? Blueberries and peanut butter tortilla and blackberries. Mm. The sun is finally starting to peak out, so we're in good shape. But either way, we're doing errands today. This is our fourth day out in the desert, so we should probably get going and start working on our list of things to do now that packages are starting to arrive. So it's safe to say we will get our batteries back charged. We don't have to worry anymore. What did you just ask? I just asked where our solar was at. Maybe I could just strain a little bit of my hair. The solar is showing 100 watts, it looks like. And we're pulling 670, so we're getting positive 30. Your straightener, whatever hair thing, is like 1200, so if you want to do it real quick, but. Perfect! Two seconds, that's ev all I need. Everything that we uh, just built will be depleted in five minutes. It's not even going to take me five minutes, it's going to take me three. Not even three. It's going to take me two. Well, yeah. oh, it's hovering around 400. That's not that bad. Hair dryer is worse than that one. I rarely use my hair dryer in here. Yeah, that one's not bad. Kind of close there, huh? Well, I was going to go right, and then you altered the course and going to go left. Worked out perfectly. It did, but I could tell you had uh, some thoughts on your mind for oh, my I mean, amazing park job. Yeah. Park sand is muddy. Yeah, well, someone wanted to take it in the desert during a rainstorm. Where did you want to stay for four nights? Baja. 
Awesome. Off to the next spot. We are headed to Home Depot and Walmart. See you there. See you there, folks. See you there. I don't like you sometimes. <laughs> Sure. Jeez, Man. break the stuff. I didn't break it, you broke it, you've yet to fix it. Just like you have yet to put the wood up behind those things because I can still see Havelock wool. <laughs> That's because I had a vision that the Star Lake was gonna break and I would need to access it. <laughs> so I didn't want to seal it all up knowing that I was gonna have issues. Yeah. Okay, this is not where we're sleeping tonight, rather. We're getting supplies for the little guy. But I do want to still go to Target. Of course. Yeah. She got there. Are you Cheerios? <laughs> yes. Boop. You're sharing it? Oh, that's so nice. Oh, no. No, you're not sharing it. How was it? I got stainless steel thick washers for the solar panels. Real thick. Fender washers, and I got Marine Fast Cure for the Starlink cable, and I bought a Sharpie for our list. Woohoo! So I guess we're off to Target or Target tomorrow, and we need food. Who's that? Hi, buddy. <laughs> wow, Target run. Cart's not that full. I almost put some other stuff back, too. Wow. I know. You did good, Nate. Yeah, you had so much fun. We almost bought a book. You did good taming mommy, didn't you? Mm. You said, Mom, we don't need that. We're back. We are back at the Van Caskies, and it's finally time to tackle this list. So our friends, Tim and Katie from Trio and Transit, if you're on Instagram, you definitely know who they are because their reels go extremely viral. They just started a flat mount company for Starlink. So they have the flat mount for the Gen 1 or I guess Gen 2, which is the one that we had. And then they also make a flat mount for the Gen 3, which is perfect timing for us because we just got the Gen 3 Starlink. And I really don't like setting it up every single time you want to use it. So. Tim and Katie, if you're watching this, thank you so much for sending this over to us. I'm so stoked to get this up on the roof. It's gonna be awesome. And Tim actually hooked me up with a little 12 volt conversion for this. So our new Gen 3 is gonna be 12 volt, just like our last one, which is really, really nice because we don't like leaving our big 3000 watt inverter on all the time because it just sucks up unnecessary power. And hopefully we can fish the wire through the existing hole because if not, I really don't want to drill a new hole. So here we go. We have the 12 volt to 56 volt converter. And then Tim connected it to, I believe, a put a capacitor on it to help smooth out the frequency. He's more of an expert in it than I am regarding the voltage coming out of the converter. I think it's like a little choppy, so the capacitor kind of just smooths and cleans that up a lot. And then this is going to go directly into the router, the Starlink router, the native router, which is nice because this router is pretty beefy and uh, it's going to be able to extend the range. So we'll be like outside of the van and still have plenty of signal and stuff. So that's going to be good. Okay, here's the mount itself. This is 3D printed, which is really, really light, believe it or not, and seems pretty strong. So that's sweet. We have, I believe this is a tool to disconnect the Starlink to the adapter. And then there's different options. You could do like a magnet or suction cup. I went with the lag bolt option. I just want to bolt this down to the roof rack. Not have to worry about anything coming loose. A nice little personal letter. So Tim and Katie, thank you so much. It was really nice. Uh, we wish you guys were in the van with your baby so we can caravan down. That would have been awesome. But yeah, thanks guys. I'm super stoked to get this on. The next part is fishing the new cable up through the channel of the existing cable and probably the most nerve-wracking part for me because these cables are a little finicky so if you like dent them or whatever then you can break the cables and it's really tight going up the channel because it's going behind the upper cabinet so let's keep our fingers crossed here let's have some good luck and let's pray that it works all right we're gonna start fishing we start fishing. This place is a wreck. Yeah, it's not great. My goodness, this is why I don't come back here. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna start pulling 
Okay. And you're gonna just feed it through. Okay. I'm pulling okay. now. Is there any tension yet? No, nothing's happening. Okay. We have a lot of excess wire then. Okay. Wow. Lots of excess wire here. Still going. Okay, now it's getting tough. Okay. All right. I'm starting to fish through. Oh, you're, you just got that big piece in, so. It's not good. How's it going up there? Horrible. Really? Yeah, it's really tight. Just make some progress? Nope. Did it break? Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I gotta think. So since the fishing didn't work, I am wiring, running the wire through the rear, rear view camera. And this thing has this little rubber grommet that I could just leverage with the existing or with the new Starling cable. And then this comes apart. So my plan is to drill a hole right through here. So the Starling cable will come through the weather gasket and then out the side of the camera and then I'll silicone that up so it's a watertight seal and then run it through this gap here, this channel, and then through the front of the van. So that's how we're gonna do it. While Kevin's working on the Starlink, I am tackling all this laundry. Some of it's still in the dryer, so I'm gonna work on folding it and putting it away while Wyatt's taking a nap. So crossing my fingers that he naps the entire time. So I got it all folded before a little man woke up, but not put away. No, he said, no, mommy, don't put away the clothes. Did you have a good nap? Yeah? You had a good nap? I love you. Okay, the Starlink is up and on. I do have to clean up a little bit, but I just realized I didn't introduce you guys to the Van Kasky, so you're probably wondering who the heck they are. So meet Bob and Hillary. They are the Van Kaskies and also have a YouTube channel. We met, well, for the first time here in Phoenix. Yep. But we've been talking for a while now and they offered us to come here as a pit stop before going to Mexico, which worked out perfectly since we just came back from Aspen. And thank God we did because all of the van dramas that we've had on this trip, but they're mm. notorious for their own set of dramas with their rig behind us. Mr. Lemon. They actually call it Mr. Lemon, <laughs> and this is a Ram Pro Master. Yes. Thor. Yes. So it's a Ram Pro Master. It's on the 3500 extended chassis. It is a Thor Talaro 20A. Mm -hmm. And is it 2022? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we've had our fair share of problems. Every problem you can think of. <laughs> they actually have a whiteboard displaying yeah. how many days since the last problem, right? Yep. Yes, we do. It's, it's zero days <laughs> since the last incident, we'll tell you that. Okay, we started looking into van life actually prior to COVID, and so when we were looking to actually build a van, COVID kind of happened, <laughs> and so it became very difficult to find all the parts and timing didn't work for us, so we ended up deciding okay, let's go ahead and buy an RV. It's pre-made. We can right. then sort of, you know, jump in and, and, you know, get to traveling right away. Instead of the year, you think it's going to take six months, but right. real life sets in and you're a year later and you're like still building on the van. So yes. I totally get that. So we actually bought our first van, which was another Thor product. It was a uh, Thor Rise. Oh. And so that was on the 1500 chassis. So much smaller didn't have a bathroom inside. We were like, ah, we don't need a bathroom. We just need a, a place to sleep and we yeah. just hit the road. Well, we learned very quickly that we do need a bathroom. And so this is our second van. Right. And so it's much bigger, has a you know fixed bed and a bathroom. Those are two critical things that we want. Taylor was so stern or so keen on the shower in the first van. And then 
We learned from the second van that we do not want a convertible bed, so we have the fixed one in our second one as well. So we hear what you're saying. Yes. Not to mention, we're already converting Wyatt's bed every night, so if we had to convert our own, that's just extra time and effort that we didn't want to put in there. So this is the infamous Mr. Lemon sign, zero days since the last issue. And after this trip, we might need to get one for ourselves because we've clearly been having a lot of issues. But in all seriousness, no matter whether you get a professional built out rig like this with an RV or a DIY like our van, you're always gonna run into issues, whether it's big or small, but being on the road for so long, it's just kind of inevitable. But one thing you wanna be is prepared. So make sure you have your tools and all that fun stuff. Thank you, Bob and Hillary, for having us and for letting us send all types of mail to your house because you guys have truly been a lifesaver. You are so welcome and it was our pleasure. We're just excited that we got to meet you guys and like make lifelong friends. Yes, yes. it was great. It's been amazing. And if you haven't already, <laughs> check out their channel, The Van Caskies. <laughs> Subscribe to them. They're going to be having more and more content in the van space they actually film a ton of rvs so you're interested in rvs they show the good the bad and the ugly mm -hmm. they're fully transparent so give it a go all right and finally check off the starlink and i could check off the compass we did that at the beginning of the trip because you need to use the bathroom so now i'm going to work on the traction boards and the solar and we're finally making progress the Starlink's working good on the 12 volt. Life's good. Solar. Check. Traction boards. Check. I gave up on the traction boards. Figured I'd just use the tie down straps that I have. Why drill more holes? Okay. What's next? Go treads. Let's talk about go treads. If you're not familiar with go treads, basically they are traction pads that fold up real nicely. So instead of having those big ones that I have on the roof of the van, these fit super clean in the garage, compact down really nicely. And then if I want to do leveling blocks, I can level them four or five inches. And then if you wanted to do less, you could just do you know, like that and so on. So I'm super stoked on these. Our friends Drifter Journey, Greg and Jess recommended we get them. And uh, you know, they use these in Baja. They've used these in their home in Colorado to get out of places. So I'm super stoked that GoTread sent us a pair of these. We do have an affiliate relationship with them too. So if you wanna get these for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description below. But yeah, this is awesome. GoTreads, thank you so much. Comes in a bag? Two, we got two, so for all four wheels. Wow, and, uh, are they just like foldable? Yeah, so there's two in here. Wow. Another one checked off. We could actually check off Holofly. I forgot we already did that as well. So now it's just basically all the miscellaneous stuff. Get our Baja Mexican insurance, pesos, food shopping, Stuff for Wyatt. We got stuff for Wyatt. We getting any more for Wyatt? We got the necessary clothes? Yes, necessary clothes are done and so is a toothbrush for his little teeth. Yeah, he's starting to get interested in brushing his teeth. Whenever we brush his teeth, he looks at us and he's... So we give him his little toothbrush and he's like, ooh, pretty cool. Well, we are finally done. We are ready to go. We have all our paperwork, all our upgrades or all of our issues resolved. So to Bob and Hillary. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. So much. Yep. We really, really appreciate it. It's yep. been awesome. Hugs all around. Yep. Yes. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. We're gonna miss you guys. Thank you so, so much. I know we said it all time, but. Bye. Say thank you so much. <laughs> bye bye. Say thank you so much. We were hoping that they were gonna come to Baja with us, but they have too many videos to film in this area, I guess. And not, not this time. Not this time. Well, hopefully soon. Might see them on the East Coast maybe too. So I'll show them our yes. of the woods. Yep. Cool. Yes, yep. for They'll sure. On our to-do mm -hmm. list. Yep. But seriously, you guys have been. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. We are officially off to Yuma. No more van projects. No more cleaning the van. Now it's just pure prep. Food, pesos all the things we need because tomorrow we are crossing into Mexico.
How you feeling? It's pretty surreal. Last time we did this was three years ago. And we were so nervous. Now I feel like we're so confident. Like it's really not a big deal. But I'm so excited to just sit on the beach for three days. Hopefully we'll have sunshine so we won't have to worry about our batteries at all. But man, Hillary, Bob, thank you again. We can't thank you enough. I know we say it a lot, but the hospitality was terrific. We would have been in trouble if we, if you guys didn't offer us a place to park and hang out. So really, really appreciate it. Well, we made it to Yuma and I was hoping to get some pesos. I tried at the bank and they said, it's gonna take three to four days to get pesos. So we're scratching the pesos and we're just gonna go straight to the border. I have like 50 from our last trip, which isn't enough for anything really, but hopefully we'll be all okay with US dollar. Hopefully there's a bank of Mexico or something right at the border. I'm gonna check that one off our list. Hi, Bubba. Hey, hi, Daddy. I'm brushing my teeth. <laughs> dee, 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 dee. Good job. Dee, 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 dee. Good job, buddy. Good morning, guys. So we are basically ready to go. We got Baja insurance through Discover Baja. We printed that out yesterday at Bob and Hillary's. We're not getting pesos, so let's check this one off. And then food shopping was done last night at Target and Sam's Club. So this is done. Right now I want to go over Holify and walk you through the instruction steps on how to set it up. It's pretty easy. So when you install your eSIM, you want to do it before you get to your destination. So we haven't crossed the border yet, obviously. So I am opening up the email. There's the QR code here, or if you're doing it, with just one device, you can just copy and paste the activation codes. A Taylor's phone, I'll just scan this QR code. Boom. Activating eSIM right now. So with Taylor, I just scanned it from my phone using the camera app. Cellular setup complete. We're done. All right, today's a happy day. We are parting with this to-do list sign. Finally. It's been about a week. Say bye-bye. Officially heading to Baja. Officially. Tune in next week for our run in with the Mexican police and our not so smooth border crossing. And our van Outside is... at a random spot, which I don't, don't like. We draw attention, so.